30 minutes or less, super bad, the interview, Mean Girls, Observe and Report, Tropic Thunder, The Bachelorette, and Pineapple Express. What do those movies have in common? Two good- things. One, we watched them all last week, and more importantly, to remind ourselves and refresh ourselves, the movies that we should have talked about last week that we waited a whole week to talk about, we watched all the trailers for them. And all that really accomplished was showing me that most movies have pretty shitty fucking trailers. They really do. Almost god awful. To recap, thirty minutes or less trailer. All it's, yeah, yeah. I, I'd watch it. Uh, super bad, shitty trailer. Yeah, it really didn't do the anything. The interview, just super boring trailer. Mean Girls, egregiously bad trailer. Yep. That movie sells itself. <laughs> I know how good it is. I don't want to watch it. Observe and Report, absolutely badass. Tropic Thunder, absolutely kick-ass. Yeah, those two are really good trailers. Hell yeah. The Bachelorette made it look way better than it actually is, and the trailer wasn't that good. Yep. And uh, Pineapple Express, just terrific fucking trailer, and my God. That was the best Paper planes, man. Dude, fucking, as you showed me these trailers, I was like, because I remember when we went to see Mean Girls. Right. Like, I have specific memories for, well, actually, almost none of these movies. I didn't see them until this past weekend. But the ones I did see, I have specific memories for. It's so like Mean Girls, I specifically remember seeing that one, but like I couldn't remember any of these fucking trailers. And then all of a sudden, Pineapple Express starts since, like, dude, I remember this trailer at all. Then all of a sudden, my A kicks uh, in. Yeah, exactly. Dude, and everything that. flowed back to me, dude. It was, was it 2005 that came out? No. 2004? Three? Up, you mean? You Whatever think, it came, you out, think it came okay? out. You think that's on came out? You think 2003? I guess Express you're right. Came 2009. Out. Fucking, my point is, though, it brought me back to being in that, time, that, that that space. I got I got goosebumps watching the Pineapple Express show. Yeah. So the only thing I remember, it, it felt good. Well, yeah, if, I mean, and honestly, they know they, they know how good it was because the fucking the throwaway joke in uh, This Is The End, where they go back to the song again for the second trailer for Pineapple Express 2. That one was by far the best trailer. And such Pineapple a, Express 2? No, I mean, that one did look pretty cool, honestly. I'm not sure about that. I don't know why that never got theatric, theatrically released. It's the people's weed. I you, gotta give it to the would people. Would you prefer it if they did, in fact, do... Imagine... You know, picture this, right? I'm okay. a bag of dicks. Yeah, picture this, all right? James Frank, who isn't a bag of dicks, okay, doesn't ruin the the comedy tree, the comedy the duo, the group, the trio, whatever you want to call it. They do make Pineapple Express too. Are you happier if it's Pineapple Express two starring Jonah Hill as Woody Harrelson? Are you happier if it's Pineapple <laughs> Express two starring Woody Harrelson and playing no, the bad guy? Absolutely, has to be in universe. Where it's Jonah Hill mm-hmm. playing it. Because they hinted at it in the world. What's that movie called? This is the end? Yeah, this is the end. Because they hinted at this is the end. It has to absolutely be Jonah Hill playing Woody Harrelson. If it's actually Woody Harrelson, the movie's terrible. What well, if it's Jonah Hill playing Woody Harrelson, but Woody Harrelson's also in the movie and Jonah Hill's not playing Jonah Hill. He's just playing a super fan of Woody Harrelson, who's like really creepy and freaking out Woody Harrelson. The kind of like the Nick Swartzen from Blades of Glory role. That's actually really good, but I was going to. This is my, my counter argument. What if it's Jonah Hill playing Woody Harrelson? Woody Harrelson's playing Jonah Hill. No. Dude, I got it. What if Jonah Hill plays Woody Harrelson uh, and Woody Harrelson just does a James Franco impression? That's genius. You're James right. James Franco's, yeah. Honestly, Woody Harrelson doing a fucking Saul Silverman kind of sounds like an SNL skit waiting to happen. Dude, you're a genius. Having him walking, he kind of seems like the perfect person to go do a, you know, a not so good impression, but just wear the same clothing pretty much and wear a very bad wig. And it would work. And I'd be happy it with it. It would just work. Make $800 million at the box office. The Tropic Thunder trailer, though. I, 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 here's the thing that sucks about all these trailers, though. Interview, I refused the watch until last weekend. Right. I refused the watch Observer Report till last weekend. True. I saw Mean Girls. Correct. I never saw The Bachelor. I forgot it existed until yep. this past weekend. I've seen well, pa- I never forgot it existed because that movie is a movie that I've seen like four times. Every time I go to watch, I'm like, no, it's, it's got to be good. It's got Kirsten yeah, yeah. Dunst, Lizzie Kaplan, and Isla Fisher, who are all individually great. So to, obviously, you know, one good thing plus two good thing plus three good thing equal three good thing. You would think. Equals nothing. Apparently, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. I'm changing my stance from two episodes ago. <laughs> really? The only one who I still find uh, has the charm that she always has is Lizzie Kaplan. Yeah. Well, that movie in particular only has one good scene, and it's not even fair to credit the movie for a good scene. The only good scene in that entire movie is when Lizzie Kaplan and Adam Scott are walking on the... Are, they go to the subway. Mm. And it's not even fair to say it's a good scene because it's just the naturally having the backdrop of the subway makes the scene feel a hell of a lot better than it actually is. Like, this is so cool. We're in the subway. We're yep. in New York. Yep, yep. Lizzie Kaplan's on the screen. It's a little party down reunion happening. Yeah, it's not fair, too. They have the chemistry of that show. Because I know. He wasn't good in that movie. No, he sucks still in that movie. chemistry between the three yeah, of them. Yeah, that's my of that. point. That movie sucked. That movie's dog shit, okay? That movie's absolute bomb of the barrel, piss and shite. However... That scene between them is pretty good. They just have naturally good chemistry. She was Unfortunately, only, James Marsden and Kirsten Dunst did not have that same chemistry. Yeah, that was terrible. 
all right? And here's another thing I want to complain about, okay? They're fucking on the bathroom countertop, right? I'm all for it. I'm invested, right? Suddenly mm. I'm thinking maybe this movie could go somewhere, <laughs> all right? Two complaints. One, the more obvious complaint that maybe the listener would expect me to say, right? Mm. I think it's weird that Kirsten Dunst, I think it's weird that James Marsden, the womanizer he is, says, no, 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 yeah, you can keep your top completely buttoned up and closed. Yeah. I'm not even looking at it in the sense where it's like I would most definitely love to see Kirsten Dunn's topless. Mm. No, no, no. I'm looking at it as, hey, this is a story, okay? You're an artist. I'm an, I'm an artist, okay? I'm a fucking artist. <laughs> this is a story, okay? You think James Mars and the Womanizer is going to be like, no, no, no. I want you to be comfortable. Keep your titties covered up. It doesn't make sense. And also, just to show that I'm on for both sides of the fucking team, right? Mm. Why was his shirt hanging so perfectly to cover his ass? That's she should have been bare man ass on the screen, all right? The way that sexy was trying to present it to us, she should have been grabbing his ass. Her tits should have been out. She should have been a hell of a lot more colorful of a show. You're going to be an R-rated movie, be a fucking R-rated movie. A, you're correct. And B, like you said before, the trailer implied a better movie. In the movie, it's, the trailer says these they have been friends forever. No, the movie says these three hot chicks are friends. And, and they, they were really mean yeah. to their other friends. Super from, uh, fucking What's her name? Rebel Wilson? Ru I thought it was Rumor Wilson. The rumor Willis is what you're thinking of. It's Rebel. You're right. And it's Rebel Wilson. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Fucking they're just so egregiously mean to her the entire time for no reason. And Kirsten Dunst is the biggest fucking bitch in the world in that I know. Movie. It does not work. And it does not she's work. She's charming in every movie she's in. It makes she's no sense. She's good being the charming It's a chick. phenomenal, phenomenal cast and not a single good performance. And that's really hard to do. That's really challenging to do. Usually, even a great ensemble in a bad movie, there's one person who gets it. I no one got it, and Jane, she gets it, but that doesn't count, because she only gets it because she's acting alongside Adam Scott, and her and Adam Scott are just good together naturally. Yeah, We're not so, crediting the shitty directing right, and the shitty right. writing for that. You're right, you're right. And most of all, James Marsden was the absolute worst, and that weird accent he was kind of doing was also really shitty. Basically, every choice he made was the wrong choice, all right? The guy's just like doing fucking movies about the Easter Bunny, and that's about it, okay? Yeah, good, good call, good call. I used to like James, what's his name? James Marsden. I used to like James Asshole, and then I saw The Bachelor. No, I still love him, because Rex is one of the greatest characters of all time. Yeah, he is pretty good, actually. Smoke that cocky, Ian. That's pretty good, okay? <laughs> I can't think of any of his lines now because, you, fuck it, God damn it. Dude, Bite my dick, asshole. That dude, I know all of his lines, but then because you did that line, Lance? you just fucking blanked out for me. That's a good movie. You're right, I do like him, actually. No, he's he's amazing in sex. Also, Cyclops. Drive. Cyclops is badass. Cyclops is really We have two really Cyclops good. on the screen. We can either have a cool guy James Marsden or a moron from The Forger, Taylor Sheridan. Ty yeah, Sheridan. He's a shitty actor, but what a writer. You know, he writes Yellowstone. Different guy. Taylor versus Ty. Two different guys. That's why that's why the whole t initial sheared and doesn't really work out too well. All right, so who wrote the Sicario movies? That's actually the guy from The Forger. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. so the guy from Ready Player confused. One. Yeah, yeah. He wrote, yeah. Uh, see, so, so it's not Yellowstone. Okay, Yellowstone is the guy from Sons of Anarchy. All those good movies, those Oscar-winning movies, uh -huh. kid from The Forger. Okay, so that makes sense then. No, 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 I get is confused. he even get acting roles anymore? Uh, or did no. that dry up pretty quickly? I think, I think they also are, remember that. Remember, remember we watched like the first thirty minutes of that movie with Dev Patel where he was like, "I'm a knight." Dude, that's so... Dude, hold on a second. I've been going on nuts about how things are fucking simulation, blah, 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 blah. I woke up this morning, and out of the blue, that movie popped into my head, and I told you I couldn't fall back to sleep this morning. Right. I was thinking of that movie, and I couldn't fall back to sleep, so I'm like, why am I thinking of this movie? I haven't thought of it in years, and I forgot we ever watched it, well, and that's in my head. And I, that's why I was trying to... Th that's why I couldn't fall back to sleep. Is that movie even years old? It's like two years old. Okay. But the point is, though, what are the odds that I can't fall asleep when I'm thinking about that movie? You, you that movie, though. Yes, you I do. do. Actually, if you, if you didn't the hear... Remember the part where he's walking in the field, and there's that creepy little Weasley kid? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Who looks exactly like Ty Sheridan is uglier. It's not wasn't Ty Sheridan. No, no. it's the other kid. No, that's definitely no, it's Ty not. Sheridan. No, You're it's not. That kid, I'll show you right now. What's that movie called? The Green Knight? I think so, yeah. The Green Dev Knight. Dev Patel. Yeah, The Green Knight. Look at this. Tell me this isn't crazy. Somehow or another, motherfucking uh, Barry Keoghan. Different actor. Wow. Just an uglier version of an early ugly person. So That's wait, hard so, to so find. Hold on. is that the guy that wrote Yellowstone? No, no, no. This is just another guy that looks like him. This is this this is the imitation, the sincerest form of flattery guy. That's really confusing, dude. And he's looking at all these new movies coming out. You know, he's in the Banshees of fucking uh whatever that movie was. He's in the Batman. Who the fuck is that guy? Apparently, he's the Joker in the Batman movie. I didn't. I don't know. I didn't see it. That guy. That's fucking crazy. That, that's not like a usual joke where saying they look like that guy is Ty, the kid. The one I'm making fun of saying he wrote Yellowstone. That kid is who that guy is you just showed me. No, different person. That's bullshit. Back to these movies. Back to these movies, the ones we actually watched recently we can talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well no, uh, side note for one last part about the shitty Bachelorette. Uh, honestly, like I said, Kirsten Dunn's horribly miscast. Don't yeah, like playing that role whatsoever. That was all. the role for Rachel McAdams that for some reason didn't go to Rachel McAdams. Yeah, Rachel McAdams would have killed it. Rachel, you know what Rachel McAdams is great at? Mm. Being a fucking asshole on screen. 
And honestly, I don't like seeing Isla Fisher play the 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 floozy not, character. No, I like not seeing her be play crazy the floozy, at the same time. Yeah, well, yeah, true. I like her seeing a crazy whore, not just exactly. a whore. But more importantly, too, I much prefer her kind of having the back and forth. No, I'm I'm a good girl, daddy. No, I'm also a crazy slut. You know, mm-hmm. this one was just her open, willy nilly, proud. Like, look at me. I'm I'm life of the party, cool girl, right? Yep. I suck dick. I do cocaine. Yep, yep, yep. And that's fun and all, but like, sh- I think her bread and butter is much more of the whole like. I'm a party girl, but it's secret. Yes, exactly. And I'm also fucking insane. And furthermore, before we move on to other movies, these girls were not friends ever. No. None of them have any chemistry together at all. And they don't like think they said, would be friends. And I got they try going for a hit. I respect it. I respect the hell of it. Go, uh, what would we do with this movie? We got three characters. Might as well go, you know, blonde, brunette, redhead. I fucking respect the hell out true. of it. If anything on this show, we've pointed out how that's not enough of That's not, blonde, not, not enough representation of that nearly at all, okay? I, I respect the hell. Listen, if there's anything you take away from this, it's I respect what they were trying to do here, okay? But they didn't do it the right way. No, and, and you you said before how th- all three of them are great and they don't have any chemistry no. at all. It's really weird and fucking fuck the Bachelor, right? It sucked. That movie did suck. Um, you know what didn't suck though? Observer pretty much all other movies we watched were actually yeah. really good. Observer- Thirty minutes or less, kicked ass. I don't know. I fell asleep. True. Super bad. Always phenomenal. The interview. The first twenty minutes do kind of suck. The whole like establishing the story thing. They could like maybe just like you know not on that. Mm. And maybe just jump straight to the North Korea stuff. That would have been pretty cool. Yeah, because everything, once they land on the ground in North Korea, is because amazing. Because hilarious balls of the wall funny. It's all funny. It's all great. And the whole crazy third third act. Yeah, I love the fucking Evan Goldberg, Seth Rogen. What if the third act, we, we spend all of our money in the third act, and everyone just gets violently massacred? The guy's a genius. I didn't even realize that all those movies incorporated that. But 30 <laughs> minutes or less in the third act, everything goes to shit crazy fucking... Observe and report. Everything goes fucking crazy in the third act. The interview goes crazy. Super bad, not so much. No, but the rest of them, Tropic Thunder, third act goes crazy. Goes crazy. Mean Girls, the entire school starts beating the shit out of each other. Yeah. The only I don't one think that th- one costs as much as the other ones we were talking about. I'm pretty sure that one was done more just practically and safely. But it follows the pattern. Pineapple Express goes absolutely ham in the last 30 minutes. Everyone's getting shot. There's explosions. Things are on fire. People's heads are getting crushed in. So... Apparently, like you said, James Franco started being James Franco. That's why the modern comedy died. You think so? Yeah, well, because look at the the great comedies that these two guys fucking had together. And everybody else, they were all action yeah, comedies. Yeah, the, the 2000s comedies. And then all of a sudden, James Remember Franco Remember we had R-rated comedies, and they just said, you know what, what if we, I don't know, what if we just, like, stop making those? What if we just stop trying? And then, and then we get, because you know, think about it. If we just stop trying for 10 years... Then in 10 years, Tommy can just be like, what went wrong? What's the issue? I don't know. <laughs> we all play dumb. Like, why don't people see movies anymore? It's like, because you're making shitty fucking movies. I thought you were going to say the, that, you know, we stopped trying for 10 years. Then all of a sudden, the barest minimum is a success. And we don't have to work for the next 10 years. No. Because that I could respect. That'd be a pretty smart plan, actually. That would be. That's like uh, in, like, fucking all the sports games where, like, Madden takes out all the features. And then next year, like, look what we added back. It's like, that's not a new feature. That was in there three years ago. <laughs> Dude, this new game is so much better. They had all these new revolutionary concepts. Like, no, they're just bringing things back. They just keep doing it. They just keep removing things. So then wait five years to bring it back. So look what we brought back. It all goes back to us saying how the 90s was the best time because all those features were in the games back in the 90s. And no connecting online, no w- updating, no roster updates. Just fucking, here's the game, dude. Everything cool you can do on the new 2K you ever watch? You ever see fucking Swingers, man? Yeah. See much fun Vince Vaughn and the guy from fucking Four Christmases are having playing NHL? Mm-hmm. They're having a fucking time of their lives. You think anyone's playing NHL right now and they're happy about it? No, those games fucking suck. What's next on this list? I want to. It's kind of crazy. I want to figure out just how the fact that it's just the seven degrees of Seth Rogen throughout all these movies. How is he's in Sorry is in thirty minutes or less, but he's also an observe and report. And how Danny McBride's in fucking thirty minutes or less, observe and report, and Tropic Thunder and Pineapple Express, and Seth Rogen's obviously in fucking Super Bad and the Interview and Observe and Report and uh Pablo Express and Lizzie Kaplan's and Mean Girls and fucking mm-hmm. The Bachelorette and the interview. That was the coolest thing about the whole week and that be watching Bill Haters in motherfucking Super Bad. He's also in Pablo Express. He's also in fucking Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder. That was the cool part about the watch these movies. We watched them in order where it's like this t- the actors yep. in these two. That was crazy. And also we transitioned to this actor and he's all oh, he was in that last one. Michael Pena's the bad guy in thirty minutes or less. He's the bad guy in Observe and Report. I didn't even really play the bad guy in these kind of things. The craziest part of this entire weekend is I've spent my entire life insisting that I do not like Seth Rogen movies. Right. I don't like his type of comedy. Correct. I don't think he's funny. I don't like his jerk off face. What's I don't not like to his like? jerk off name. I don't like him jerk right. off. 
Turns out I'm a huge Seth Rogen no, fan. No, I don't know. I'm a huge Seth Rogen fan from the years of 2000 to 2015, I guess. That's true. If I try to watch anything that came out in the last five years, I'm going to But it could be proven wrong because you know what? I haven't watched it, but it's just like, I don't know. Charlie's, Charlie's the Ron mm. and Seth Rogen's doesn't sound like a good movie to me. We have to, you have the problem is, or, or the, the actual re- the answer is, we have to wait 10 years to watch right. it. Then we can truly yeah, appreciate it's true. In, it. 20, in 2037, I'm like, dude, I was wrong. Neighbors was a funny movie. Ike Barinholtz is a comedy genius. When did Neighbors come out? 2016, I think. 2014. 2016, yeah. 2014, 2014, 2016. So it was like six, seven years ago it came out. So it's kind of funny, but it's not really funny yet. we got to wait another four years, and we'll really be able to, to see how genius it was. So in 2024 yeah, yeah, yeah. or 2026, whichever when it came out. Mm. That would be interesting, you know? I'll be like, God damn, I, I can't believe I, mis- I misjudged it. I, I thought Christopher Plaza was only funny in Mc- as McLovin. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, he also happens to be great. Actually, he's pretty cool. He's pretty cool and kick-ass, actually. Yeah, he's great and kick-ass. All right, so in 2026, I'll be like, I thought Christopher Mintz Plass was only good in two movies. It turns out he's great in Neighbors as well. And then, like, five more years, I'm like, damn, that TV show Joe McHale had on NBC where it was just a knockoff Last Man Standing. Mm-hmm. Animal that show control? was great. No, not Animal Control. One of the other many failed projects. Oh, my projects. God. I forgot about that one. You're right. Outdoorsman. Dude, it, yeah. Project it, guy. Yeah, it was the outdoors. It was something. It out, was like. Outdoor was in the title, I, th- I swear. Outdoorsy guy goes to work in corporate America. Dude, what is it like inside your brain that you can remember all this shit? Do you have title, to, like, apparently. When you're speaking, is there another part of your brain going to all the recesses of your mind? Yes. Or is it all simultaneous? Because it's honestly scary. It's one of my sometimes. seven distinct personalities. It's kind of all we kind of just take off, you know, different responsibilities, make the day go by easier. Oh, so you have this disadvantage. You have split personality. Remember that movie with Julianne Moore when she was talking to that guy and he's like, Who am I talking to? And it's like that whole like murder. I think Tougher Grace was in it, maybe. Susan Sarandon's in the one you're thinking. Um, of. Really tougher Grace, yeah. It's called. That's it's different. Called the right, no, the one with Julianne like Moore that. is the one with the guys. Like, I think it's called Seven Souls, maybe. I oh, was in John Cusack in that. No, that's a movie like, called like Thirteen or whatever. We're never getting to the bottom of this. There's a movie somewhere about a guy <laughs> doing something <laughs> in which a woman perhaps talks to him in some regard regarding what he's Moore. talking about with his hair and his, and his side of his head. I mean, and uh, he's kind of all like, "I have seven personalities," and she's like, "Which one am I talking to?" He's like, "The one you shouldn't be talking to," or whatever. So it's a cool trailer movie. You know, talking no, John about John Cusack's definitely in that movie. It's the no, John, John Cusack's the one with. He's in a lot of dumb movies, but it's not that dumb movie. No, John I'm Cusack. Telling you. No, it's not. John Cusack's in the one where he's on the fucking, the the what's the one that dumbass wrote? I think I think Man Pete's husband wrote it. Maybe David Benioff. Yeah, I think it's the way John Cusack's not in X Men Origins Wolverine. No, but didn't he also do that dumbass movie with you that's supposed to be a thriller where they're in like a roadside motel in the rain and that's the one with Julianne Moore you're talking about? Julianne Moore's on that movie. Is she? No, she definitely is. No, she's not. Julianne Moore had better things to do in 2003 than me in that movie. I'll, think I'll, I'll look at the goddamn movie, okay? So I'm not going to the bottom of this organic. I'll fucking succumb to being a little basic ass. You know, you know what the, the the worst kind of podcasts are? The one where the guy's like, so he starts reading an article out loud and it's not giving any, just just literally reading to you. And he's yeah. like, oh, let me look that up. Oh, look, oh it's interesting. Let me, let me look at this. We, All right, we have to be a more on top of it than that. We need a Jamie just to pull up as we're talking. Do you need a Jamie to pull up as we're talking? Dane Cook was sucks. right. We need a sound engineer. We need a Jamie. We need a full staff to make this bad boy work. All right. Uh, the movie's called... Uh, uh, I really I did. I thought, I, th- I thought that I had found it. And apparently it doesn't exist anymore. Oh, Identity. John Cusack, Julianne Moore. John Cusack, Amanda Pete, Ray Liotta, John Hawks. Julianne Moore. Alfred Molina, John C. McGinley. And then her husband has nothing to do with it. It's still a shitty movie. Another way. You know, I guess because it was a shitty movie, I thought David Benioff must have wrote it. Yeah, that makes sense. It has a really long of elimination. But no, it's uh, directed by the fucking Joe Schmo who just... Um, didn't this guy just ruin a movie like a week ago? What guy? James Mangold. He's the guy who did Logan. I thought he just did oh, some yeah, new he, movie. He ruined. He? Oh yeah, he did. Hey, hey, hey. It was Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny. Yep. His producing credits came before his directing credits. That makes sense. That's what it is, you piece of shit. <laughs> Back to the weekend. Observe and report. Thirty minutes or less. What we're talking next? True. Uh, let's go through them one on one. Just that's what we'll do. Uh, thoughts. That, you know, we should have done that earlier. Yeah, that would make more sense. It made a lot more sense than spiraling out of control. Thirty minutes or less. Overall, I fell asleep. True. I'll, I'll However, do my part, but I thought I kicked ass. Yeah, what I haven't I, seen the movie in like 10 years. I thought it was really fucking good. I remember not liking it when we saw it the first time, and the parts I didn't fall asleep during, You didn't during, like it because you're a fucking asshole? Uh-huh. That's the main issue. That's why you didn't like it, because you're, because you're just... Yeah, I had to stick you know, up my ass for my life. The best way to describe you as a fucking, in your adolescence, mm. is the annoying, is um, Bill... Pa- oh, my God. Bill, not Pullman. Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton's annoying shithead son... 
on Big Love. Wow. That you know what? That's really ac- really mean and it hits hard, but it's really true. It hits really hard and I wouldn't expect much coming out of me. Do you know why it hits so hard? It's because it's true. Because it's true. The hardest thing is truth hurts. Truth hurts. Wow. I um, tell, tell me I'm wrong though. I can't. I can't say you're wrong. And what's funny is is you didn't watch all of Big Love. I did, and the entire time I hated that kid. You know I didn't know why. Him? Do you know why you probably hated him? I hate myself. Did you hate yourself? You and uh for all because I'd look him up. I don't, don't for a second, if you're listening to this, think that I know your name out of respect. I had to look up your fucking name, Douglas Smith. Okay. I'm not gonna remember that in five seconds from now. Mr. Guy from that one scene of Big Little Lies. You're fucking known for that, dude. You were in like two episodes. He's in Big Little Lies. Remember Shalane Woodley was like he's like he was like her coffee barista. He's like, hey. Yep, yep. He's also, I think, the Oh, look at him. That's so cool. He's in a movie in twenty twenty three with the man of safe read. This guy gets around. Look at him, dude. I'm also in a pity invite to set. She's like, yeah, he's my brother on a my big break. Didn't really, didn't really break off for him. No, so I got, I got to toss him a bone here or there. Succeeds, I succeed. We're the same person. That's true. You are the same person. You're that piece of shit from the Bye Bye Man as well. So if the guy from the Bye Bye Man, but no, you hated three minutes or less because you're a fucking loser. And back then you were all like, drugs are bad. The objectifying women is bad. Saying offensive things is bad. Here's here's to respecting women. Here's to here's to here's to here's to here's to here's to respecting women. You know what's disappointing. What's boys that? were over this past weekend. Yes, I said that joke four times. I and no one, you did. I'm sorry, you're right. You got the joke, but I thought at some point it was some perfect like, transition. You know what the next movie on the list is to talk about? Super bad. Super bad. Thoughts on super bad? Fuck, super good. So, yeah, it's super not bad, bad at all. Super, it's not even remotely bad. I guess that great. reverse psychology thing they were going for. It's actually super fucking good. Uh, best part of the movie right now. One thing, only one coming. Gotta go fast. I'm well, over. I'm sorry, what? Best part of the movie. Only got time for one coming on each movie. We're talking too much. Okay. Super bad. Best part of the movie. Yeah. One, two. No, you just go first. Oh, I don't know. You say first. Let me think. Robbie, best part of the movie. Go immediately. Try to. Michael Sarah. Yeah, too, too generalized, but fine. See, Michael that's why I told you. Let me part. fucking think. You I wouldn't think let me. The best me. part of the movie is how whenever Michael Sarah is talking to Becca, whenever it's Evan talking to Becca and he's flirting with her, Becca's best friend is in the background like, this guy's a fucking loser. That's the entire time yeah. laughing and everything. He's a fucking nerd. It's either that or the fact that whenever Evan goes to talk to fucking Jewel, she's like, okay. And whenever Seth goes to talk to Becca, she's like, okay. I think yep. it's great that neither of the girls at all like the other guy's friend. That is great, but I forgot what the best part was. This is what you thought me think. What is it? Best part is when he goes, well, she goes, piss your pants. That was in the eighth grade, you dick. True. Dave Franco did kick ass. And that was like eight years ago, man. That's what it is. Yeah, People never right. forget. I knew I fucked up the line. I'm, an, and I'm, just gonna, I'm the asshole from Big Love. I'm just going to stop talking. You are the asshole from Big Love. I'll do both parts. Interview, um, kicks ass. I already explained kind of the, the whole Korea part's awesome. Um, actually, no, the best part of that movie is the fact that uh, Seth Rogen gets two fingers bit off. Then he bites off that guy's two fingers. Then that guy bites yep. off his remaining two fingers. Then he fucking uh, plops the guy's ass onto a joystick and goes through his rectum. <laughs> and then fucking so Hector's rectum, rectum was is real? real. Oh my god! And then the fucking gunshot. That movie just I like fucking that movie just gets so crazy so quick at the end. It's so good. So let's revisit back to Neighbors for a second. So I know Seth Rogen didn't write that at all, but like. So he had no creative input because everything he seems to I write. I think he wrote Neighbors, didn't he? I didn't think he wrote Neighbors. I think you're pulling that out of thin well, while air. While you look it up, my point is, though, the movies that he wrote. Your point's I, invalid if you wrote Neighbors. Shut up. The, point, the movies he write, writes go balls to the wall nah, he and keep it. He just going. produced it. So like you said, the scene plays off. His fingers get put off. Okay, it's probably going to stop well, no, here. Think about the Neighbors. Remember that one? Remember he throws the uh, lights around his ankle and lasses him and pulls him? That was... That was Basically the equivalent. No, it's, that's not even remotely. Oh no! The remember the, the uh, he sits on a he sits on a fucking uh, on an airbag and goes flying into the ceiling. No, see, that's stupid. No, that's action comedy. No, it's not. That's 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 fucking stupid. Remember, uh, Zach Afron was like, "Pour baby grease on. Pour the oh, should we have baby grease? That's like that's how you get the last two abs. Fuck, pour some hot turkey grease on me." There's only one thing that's funny about Neighbors in its entirety. And it's that Michael Carmichael. What's that guy that had the TV show? Jared Carmichael. That guy's hilarious. That's he the only thing that's remotely good about Neighbors <laughs> is him. I hate Mondays. <laughs> you guys, you guys shave your pubes. What are we yeah. talking about? That guy's hilarious. I don't touch you saying to shave. I thought my face. I clean up. I thought take photos. I clean up my face. I can't get off. That guy is hilarious. And also, actually, I think um, no, Zach Efron. Kill, we're being mean. Zach Efron kills in the second movie when we're he's talking the, about the first movie though. Okay, well then you're right. So There's the only one movie. good thing about the first Zach movie. Zach Efron's kind of funny in the first movie. Yeah. He kills in the second one, but he's, he kind, he's, he's okay in the first one. I don't one. know how that guy does it, but he yeah. murders in the second one. I don't like movie. the guy, but he does every time. Claire Grace also is kind of, she's not very funny in the movie, but she looks pretty cool in the movie, and that's kind of a bonus for it. That's true. She, she, yeah, that's, that's a good point. It's a pretty solid, it's a pretty solid point to bring to the table. It's like, yeah, maybe not. There's always say to find the positives and the bad, you know? Don't mm-hmm. be negative, Nancy. 
Mean Girls. Um, Dude, I want to talk about Mean Girls next. How'd you figure that out? It's in the, it's in the written order. Oh. Mean Girls, which is because my memory being, mm-hmm. it's never gotten worse. Right. It's never gotten better, though. That's true. It's not one of those things that grow. It's just, it is what it is, exactly. Like, and like, there are a lot of parts that actually that I disagree. I, maybe it has gotten worse. Because it's like whenever Tina Fey was on the screen, I was like, stop talking. Get was, off my screen. I don't know. I, whenever Amy Poehler was there, I was like, get off my screen. Oh, I get what you're saying. Whenever it was, uh, whenever we weren't following the main characters, I was like, these people, all these side characters, you know, the guy from fucking um, Scrubs mm-hmm. doesn't even talk so much. True. And like, honestly, everybody knows Jingle Rock is a eight and a half minute yeah, song. It's like Why a 12 and a half minute. Yeah. It's like 15 it's, minutes long. It's 35 minutes, the, the, the live it's edition. It's like a 42 minute rendition. Why didn't usually? we play the hour long And geez, I remember there being cut. a lot more like slow down sensual parts of it too, where it became like a very like, you know, you know, just... Take your top off. Just, you know, where the, I think that was one of the lines, wasn't it? It's like, Jingle Bell, Jingle Take Bell, your top Jingle off. Bell Rock. It's the right time to, to flash those titties yeah. now. It's exactly. <laughs> See, that's, it's weird. It's really weird they did half the song for that. I movie. agree. That would have been a lot cooler. And again, is that movie rated PG 13? Yeah, which honestly. Fuck that. It, it should have been an R rated comedy. It really should have been. I should think it wasn't, wasn't it supposed to be, though. Wasn't that the whole uh, whatever, whatever, masturbated with a hot dog? Oh yeah, you're right. I think it was just been already comedy yeah. originally. All right, fine. You get a pass, Tina Fey. Uh, observe and report. Ten out of ten. Dude, home it's run. So funny. I know, man. Dude, I did not expect that to be that funny at all. I had no <sighs> idea what it was going no, into no, you, it. You didn't think it'd be funny. You you were refusing to watch it for ten years. Sell it as was it Paul, is. Uh, you're right. Because uh, Paul Blart Mall Cop, which that movie fucking sucks. I'm not sure how that, I'm not sure how that movie existing made people not go see the other movie. Considering the trailer was awesome. The trailer didn't look at all like Paul Blart Mall, Paul Blart Mall Cop. Yeah, the trailer's actually really good. And like I said, the other trailers we said sucked, didn't show the, the actual essence of the movie. Observer Report managed to capture the essence of the movie without actually really telling... Like, like that chick from The Office isn't in the trailer at all. Yeah, it's true. They got rid of like three or four plots that are the in the movie from, from the trailer. The chick who's in one episode of The Office, yes. The chick from Hot of Time Machines, yeah. not in the trailer at all. Colette Wolf, give her some respect. Colette Wolf isn't in the trailer at all. No, a lot so, of Ferris though, yeah. and looking her absolute best. But they make it seem like he's the girl. He's, like they, they they do change your viewpoint, which is it, it's Jody pretty Hill's trailer. a smart guy, man. He is a smart guy. Tropic Thunder, great trailer. Great trailer, great movie, hilarious, funnier every time you watch it. Yeah, that one gets better every time. The Bachelorette, we kind of that one we kind of harped on in the beginning a little bit. Um, Sucked. Absolute dog shit. I saw it once, and I can honestly. I'm gonna say watch it again in like five years and be just as shocked as I'm like, Wait, there's nothing funny about it at all. I always think there's gonna be at least one funny part. You know what's probably really funny? Watching it on silent. But boom. Be a lot more interesting. I don't know if it'd be funnier. I think it'd be just I think the honestly, I think the humor would say the exact same with none of the jokes written into it. What we should do is we should play the movie on silent next time. Then we should we'll play, play it on audio. silent in reverse. Yep. We'll right. play it in black and white too. Yeah. We'll really right. change and make it a whole new experience. We'll have just like some pian- we'll have we'll hire someone just to play piano in the background so it feels like an old time movie. That's the way it really should, was meant to be watched. <laughs> Well, yeah, considering how shitty the dialogue was, it must have been. It must have just been like an afterthought. Like, oh, we need to include this. Wait, oh, fuck. They have to talk in this thing? And I think I said oh, it already. Shit. I think I said it, but like, the movie sets it up like you're supposed to fucking sympathize with Kirsten Dunst. She's she hates Rebel bitch. Wilson because she's fat and is getting married before her. Yeah. She's, she's a, a pretty terrible snide fucking cunt person. In the movie. Yeah, she's a pretty, she's a pretty, it's pretty such piece a of shit. It's a bad fucking movie. It's like the fucking, uh, when, uh, on the. It's more than football Friday Night Lights podcast where he was saying the whole love triangle only works if you like the characters. Why are we making Julie cheat? We're not going to like Julie anymore. Exactly. And who the fuck cares about the Swede? The Swede fucking sucked, dude. Swede fucking sucks. I know. Then Pineapple Express also gets funnier. Uh, Pineapple Express, when we were watching movies, I wanted to throw it on because I was like, well, this kind of fits as the next thing. Another Seth Rogen movie, another comedy, blah, 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 blah. Mm. But then I was also like, I've seen this one like a lot recently. I didn't think I was going to laugh. Is this going to be where I'm like, this movie sucks? But thank God, no, I watched it and it's just, again, every time you watch it, it's funnier and it's funnier and it's funnier and it's funnier. Because we watched it recently and I thought the same thing, like, I'm not going to enjoy it, but then I laughed at parts that I forgot about from the first time. So, like, everything I remembered from the first go around, I remembered and everything I forgot about was made me laugh my ass off. Well, what, what, what's something, what was, like, your favorite joke watching it? Uh... I'll tell you what it wasn't. We watched the extended version, and apparently the extended version is just is just adding more, et cetera, from yep. commun- Kevin. What's his name? Kevin Cooligan, that guy. I don't, I don't know. That guy and sucks Craig that. Robinson. I think it's Kevin something like that. I think it's honest. I think it's so close to Kevin Cooligan that if he is hearing this, he's gonna be in that weird situation. He's like, am I, am, I, am I pissed that he almost got it, <laughs> or am I pissed that it's like am I pissed that it's not right, or should I be happy that it's kind of close? Like, you know, I think he's gonna be in that. Situation. He's like, you son of a bitch. Yeah, that's a good point. I gotta go home and get to my wife. Wasn't even the movie at least? Was it? No, Ted's other guy. What was his name? He kept saying, Craig Robbins kept yelling, like, fuck you, bitch. I don't know. Brian, Brian, Steven, bitch. I don't What's know his name in Goodfellas? My brother. <laughs> 
brother. Yeah, Ray Liotta's brother is his name in Goodfellas. It's Henry, it's something Hill. Henry Hill and uh, Hill. Wheels Hill. <laughs> Back to like episodes where I get to say Wheels. It's honestly crazy that guy sucks. The guy's also in Superbad. Also in Superbad. It's crazy that guy sucks so hard because he's worked with Scorsese 17 times. A bajillion times. He's in Goodfellas. He's in Departed. He's definitely in another one of those movies I'm forgetting about. Probably. He, he's in fucking every Seth Rogen movie. He's in Californication. The guy's everywhere. You think his acting would improve at some point. At some point. Most people know those guys are just a really nice guy where it's like just such a sweetheart. Like we watched uh, the Joseph Sakura thing yesterday. And it was God, like that guy. The, the guy on GQ the was like, he's talking about. I the, usually the ten things you can't live without sucks. Those are all such personal items. Like this guy, I love this guy to death. When he said the R stuff, like this guy's a pretentious prick. He's like, my and niece painted, my painted this. this. My this mom really painted, painted this. this. My brother, my brother made, made this when I was seven. Yeah, it's, like, it's like, oh my god. Fucking love that guy, man. Yeah, I love that guy now too. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna watch. I, I'm gonna watch Power Book Four. Yeah, I'm gonna watch. All, I'm gonna go back and watch Shitty Power again just to be like Joseph Sakura. Respect to you. Yeah, really, like you, man. You're a saint. Um, what do you think? All these movies. What, oh, one more funniest? one more remark about uh, the interview though. Seth Rogen needs to stop going by Seth Rogen and start going by Aaron. Mm-hmm. It never and nothing's ever f- suited a person more in a movie except for or when it's like Charlie Sheen plays Charlie Harper. Like, that makes sense. Yep. Or he goes on to Anger Man's when he's playing like Charlie Smith. Like, oh, that makes sense. His name's Charlie. Dude, within ten minutes of the interview, when they start saying Aaron, I just accept the fact that Seth That's Rogen's Aaron. name yep. is Aaron. He's Literally, not Seth Rogen. I kept seeing James Franco. Uh, it's James Franco. Yeah, they kept saying Dave Scott. I mean, you can't have the character James Franco be named Dave, like Dave Franco. That's absolutely. Imagine if fucking Owen Wilson's new movie is playing Luke. You'd be like, really? <laughs> That's stupid. Luke Wilson is Owen Daniels. That would have been hilarious. Is he? I think his name is Luke Daniels, maybe. I can take Luke Daniels. What's your favorite of the movies? Favorite of the movies? Can you hit the back button? Because I I need to see all them to actually know what we're All right, watching. well, let's let's rank them in reverse order, all right? What was the worst movie? On three. Gosh. One. Wow. Let's do that again. You're not weird. Okay. Let's bring them on. Let's bring them backwards. One, <gasps> I three, coughed, nine. Sorry. On three. One, two, three. The Bachelorette. Bachelorette. Yeah, that was terrible. Oh, cool. You're choosing that thing where it can't load. I'm sorry. Oh, sick. I'm sorry. I suck so much. That's awesome, dude. Thanks for ruining everything yet again. Uh, three minutes or less is probably the next. You know, it was hilarious. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, I'd say the next. No, I'd say the next least funny we're doing this in comedy would be Mean Girls. Based on com- com- yeah, you're right. So, Bachelorette's what is this nine movies or eight movies? Uh, eight. All right, so eight, number eight, The Bachelorette. Mm-hmm. Number seven, Mean Girls. Yep. Then Thirty Minutes or Less for sure. Uh, yeah, number yeah, yeah. Number six, Thirty Minutes or me- uh, Thirty Minutes or Less. Thirty Minutes or Mean Girls. Thirty Minutes or Less. <laughs> then it's Observer Reporting. I loved it. No, no, no. Really? Mm, obs- I think number. F- mm. Dude, no, you're wrong. Even though the Observer Report's great, these other movies are too good to fucking go after that, uh, before that. Okay, hold on. Eight is The Bachelorette. Yes. Seven is Mean Girls. Okay. Six is 30 Minutes or Less. Yes. I can agree with that. Yep. It's either Observer Report or, or The Interview. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm debating between. I think... No, the interview. No, interview goes at five. No, you're wrong. Interview's at four. Fine! You're wrong. Observer Report's five. The Interview's four, Okay. Three is Tropic Thunder. Yes. Two is fucking super bad. One is Pineapple Express as far as funny in it. No, fuck it. Super bad's one. God yeah, right? damn it. Honestly, what? Yeah. Fine. Here's the list. God damn it. Bachelorette's eight. Mean Girls is seven. 30 Minutes or Less is six. Fucking Observe and Report is fucking five. The Interview is fucking four. Tropic Thunder is three. Pineapple Express is two. And Super Bad is one. All right? That's what we watched last week.